Tally ho, flight nerds. This is Ben Johnson from FlightNerdAirForce.com. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be talking about a topic that lots and lots of people want to try and understand. How does an airplane fly? Or what makes an airplane fly? And there's a joke in aviation. What makes an airplane fly? Money. Money makes an airplane fly. But the reality is something else makes the airplane fly. Some scientific principles, uh, the use of air and uh, flowing fluids. Uh, we're going to talk about that in today's video, what makes an airplane fly. Airplanes fly because of something called Bernoulli's Principle. Uh, for those of you who are science nerds, Bernoulli's Principle is a correlate of the law of the conservation of energy. Now, the conservation of energy says the total energy, or TE, in a system, in a closed system, equals the potential energy in that system plus the the kinetic energy in that system. So uh, potential energy is the ability of something to act uh, on a for it, with force on something else, the, the, the potential ability for it to do that. Uh, it's not actually moving yet, but it has the ability to, do, to act on another object. Uh, kinetic energy is the fact that an object is actually moving, it's in motion, it's uh, actually using that motion or energy to move or have a force on something else. So the total force in a system is both the potential and the kinetic energy put together. Uh, and in any given system, again this is the law of the conservation of energy, in a closed system you never actually lose uh, one of these types of energy or another. The whole equation ends up balancing out. So if something speeds up, generally what's happening is you are increasing its kinetic energy, but then you're going to be decreasing its potential energy. Or if you uh, increase its potential energy, you're going to end up decreasing its kinetic energy. Now that sounds really nerdy, that sounds like a lot of theory, but it's going to play uh, a very important role in how airplanes end up flying. Uh, when we talk about airplanes, we're actually talking about fluid dynamics. Fluid dynamics. It's, a, it's an area of science where we study the motion of fluids and how they work. Air, believe it or not, is a fluid. It's a very thin fluid, but it functions just like a fluid. Um, and uh, in this equation of uh, where we're conserving the energy in the system, uh, uh, the, the kinetic energy in a fluid is the energy that that fluid has as it's moving. That's its kinetic energy. Its potential energy is the pressure inside of that fluid. So if the pressure of that fluid increases, you are increasing its potential energy. Uh, and often what happens is if you increase the pressure, uh, and increasing the potential energy, you are decreasing the kinetic energy. This formula is going to be very important for us to understand how uh, an airplane flies. So let's get this off our chalkboard here. And I want to show you then how this interacts uh, in the world of aviation while we're actually flying the airplane. The wing of an airplane is actually, if you took a cross section of it, is shaped a lot like this. It's a bit of a teardrop shape. As we're flying along, uh, the airplane is moving through the air in this direction. Um, and what we're doing is we are causing the air that's around the airplane to flow over the surface of the wing. Uh, so the air is going to come to the leading edge of the wing and it's going to have to decide, it's going to hit this leading edge and it's either going to go down around the bottom or it's going to go up over the top. Now what happens in a situation like this as it's moving is when these, say there's two molecules of air right here and right here and the one molecule of air goes down under the surface of the wing and the one molecule goes over the top of the wing. Because the bottom of the wing has a flat surface, the molecule that travels underneath the wing actually has to travel a shorter distance than the molecule that travels over the top of the wing because this is a curved surface. So this distance to get back to the, the trailing edge of the wing is a longer distance. And these two molecules, because they started together, are going to want to finish this journey over the wing and under the wing together. So in order for this one to cover this distance to get here, in the same amount of time it takes the one on the bottom getting from the front to the back, this molecule on the top that goes over the top 
has to pass over the top of the wing at a faster velocity because it's covering a, a longer distance in a shorter period of time. So what ends up happening is this molecule goes over the top and it has to, has to go faster. It moves quicker over the surface of the wing. Now, do you we remember our, uh, our formula is that the total energy in a system equals the kinetic energy uh, plus the potential energy. What we're doing when this molecule goes over the top of the wing and it speeds up, what's increasing? What's increasing is its kinetic energy. It's moving faster. It has more energy, more kinetic energy. So in that equation that we had previously, something's got to give, right? If the total energy in that system, law of conservation of energy, if the total energy in the system needs to stay the same, something's got to change. Kinetic energy increased. So what has to happen is our potential energy has to decrease. And uh, like we said, in a fluid like air, the potential energy of that fluid is the pressure of the fluid. So what happens, kinetic energy on top here increases, but the potential energy is going to decrease. And what that means is the pressure of the air on top of this wing is going to decrease. We'll have a lower pressure zone of air on the top of this wing. And then the difference, you will have a difference in pressure. There'll be a higher pressure area below the wing and a lower pressure of air, area of air above the wing. So what ends up happening is because there's a pressure difference, the air on the bottom here uh, always wants to move air, uh, fluids always want to try and equalize each other out. So if this is a, a positive area of pressure and this area up here has a negative pressure, this air up there wants to be drawn up toward this area. And so what you end up having is this low pressure area draws, it pulls the wing up in, a, in, a, in an upward direction. So you can see this actually increases and you get more and more of this low pressure zone and what we call lift, that low pressure lift pulling up on the wing the faster we can get this air moving over the surface of the wing. That is one portion of what we end up calling lift, the force that ends up drawing or pulling the airplane up into the air. There's one more factor here as well, and that is Newton's law. One of Newton's laws says that um, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Um, so when two things run into each other, if my hand here hits this hand, the fact that my fo the force of this hand hits this one makes this hand want, want to begin moving too. They have an equal and opposite force on each other. Uh, this is true when we're flying an airplane too. Again, this is uh, the cross section of our wing. Sometimes when we're flying, we can. it is possible, the, the plane doesn't always fly in a straight line through the air. You can fly in a nose high attitude and kind of kind of a slide through the air with our nose up like this. And what happens is uh, there's something called, this is our angle of attack. The angle of attack is the angle between, if we draw a line between the leading edge of the wing and the trailing edge of the wing, this line right here is called our cord line. Uh, and then we have something called the relative wind. And in this situation, our relative wind is at this kind of an angle. The airplane is flying, we call it kind of mushing through the air. It's got a high angle of attack and it's mushing through the air uh, with the leading edge at a very high angle. Uh, and this angle right here, this angle right here between the cord line of the wing and the relative wind that is blowing, that the that plane is moving through, that is, is passing over the wing is called, uh, this is the angle of attack. What happens in a situation like this, especially when we have a high angle of attack, the relative wind, the air that's coming at the wing, is hitting this wing and then it bounces off. And it's forced into a downward direction away from the bottom of the wing. So the air hits, bounces down, hits, bounces down. And this, happen this is happening constantly as the plane is flying through the air. But this wind, this air that hits the bottom of the wing is having a force on the airplane as well. So we have this positive force pushing against the wing and actually as it hits here, it's pushing the airplane, pushing the wing up. Uh, that that uh, interaction between forces of the air hitting the bottom of the wing, it hits the bottom of the wing and pushes the wing in an upward direction. This is a lot like if you're driving in your car and you roll down the window, you're driving at a high speed, you stick your hand out the window and you tip your hand up, you can feel that wind push your hand 
uh, in an upward direction. So there's two factors here that help to make the airplane fly. One is Bernoulli's principle, which is the low, and this, this hap, both of these are working together at the same time. Bernoulli's principle is having an effect, so we're causing a low pressure zone up on top of here, but we are also having this interaction, the force of the wind hitting the bottom side of the wing. This is causing a negative pressure on top. This is causing a positive force on the bottom. And as a result, we are both pushing and pulling that wing up and off the ground. So those are the two forces that work together. Uh, Newton's law and Bernoulli's principle are working together to create a force that we call in aviation lift. This is what causes an airplane to fly. This is what gives it the force it needs to overcome gravity, to overcome the weight of the airplane uh, and get it off the ground. I hope that made uh, a lot of sense and helps you understand how an airplane actually flies. Well, I hope that video on how does an airplane fly really helps you understand the, the old mystery of what in the world keeps airplanes up in the sky. Uh, if you wanna learn more about aviation, I also have a great video called uh, what it takes to get your private pilot's license. And whether you're the person who really is interested in uh, going through the process and uh, trying to get your private pilot's license, or you're just somebody who's interested in what it actually takes to do that, uh, if you're just a hobbyist and you're interested in aviation in general, I think this will be a great video for you uh, to check out. So you can do that by clicking on this video right here. There should be a link on the screen for you to check out, and we'd love to have you come uh, take a look at that and see maybe if your career is uh, going to be going further in the world of aviation. Uh, thanks so much for checking out the video. Have a great day.